Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to access the, uh, the hidden API behind otter.ai. So you can automate all aspects of the meetings you have, anything you record. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, in this particular use case, we're gonna be showing you how to get meetings, you know, after meetings have happened, how to grab those meeting notes, the summaries and the transcripts that otter.ai produces, and add those to our meeting notes in a Google Doc, so that later on when we wanna create proposals from those Google Docs or, you know, create some sort of a database of like frequently used services or FAQs. All of this information is pretty well stored in those Google Docs. Now, before I go any further, I should say this is going to be slightly different to most videos, um, conceptually speaking. I'm a big um, uh, believer in building backwards. By that, I mean, when you want to make an automation, you think, what is the business use case here? What am I actually trying to achieve? And working backwards from that objective. This one's different. I basically did this because I was taking a lot of meetings one day and everybody was using author.ai and I thought, is the way to automate this. I went into the otter.ai website. They have no API documentation. I went on Google. No one's done anything about how to automate otter.ai. So I thought, okay, I don't really have a specific business use case for this, but I did manage to find a cool bunch of stuff you could do and the information it gives you so that you could build something better. Nonetheless, I didn't want it to just be, you know, a short video of like, here is the API, here is three endpoints. I did put something together, which I think could be useful. So before we get any further, for those of you who don't know what otter.ai is, it is basically a, um, a meeting bot. It jumps into your meeting, Zoom, Google Meets, whatever, takes notes, gives you a summary, gives you a, um, you know, gives you a summary, gives you a description, gives you um, a transcript, all of this stuff. Um, and on its own, you know, how useful is that? It's one more tool you need to jump into every single day, which is what I try to lean against. If I have to every morning jump into jump into whatever this is, otter.ai, and then jump into my Airtable, jump into my mate, jump into my email, jump into my LinkedIn. It's, it, just, it, it just doesn't happen eventually. So what I've tried to do here is create a system, grabs those meeting notes automatically, um, adds them to a Google Doc. It also creates some Google tasks for follow-up information. And uh, after that, um, puts it into uh, puts it in a place where it can use those documents in the future. As I mentioned earlier, you might want to use those documents for an FAQ or to create proposals automatically. Sky's the limit. So the first step is um, to actually get a list of uh, recordings. So I went, again, there's no API, there's no documentation for Otter.ai, so this is all just me going onto their website, loading pages, clicking on inspect element, checking all of the calls it's making, searching for stuff that might be interesting. And one of the more interesting ones I found was this, HTTPS, colon slash slash otter.ai slash forward slash API slash v1 slash speeches question mark then your user ID which you will have to find by popping into otter.ai basically pop into otter.ai inspect element refresh the page and then in network just go to search and just type in user ID for example and then hopefully it will um, return you the your particular user ID in fact if I just do this now so I've gone into the page I press refresh come into network all right and then it's loading a whole bunch of stuff. Oh gosh, all right, let's put this down. So it's loaded all of these calls. And then if I type into the filter user ID, oh yeah, you see here, I've got a whole bunch of stuff with my user ID. So that's how you would get that. Other than that, the only thing you need to do is decide on the page size. So for this example, page size 10, I want it to return me 10, 10 meetings every day. And then at the bottom here, we go to advanced settings. We add in our username and password. So I'm not gonna show you my password because obviously I don't want you to use my free plan or access my my meetings, or my oh so important and uh, proprietary meetings. But essentially that's what happens there. So if I make a call, I'm just gonna move my head. So, okay, so when we get that call, all right, we get a status to say, okay, um, you know, here are the meetings, they call them speeches. So I've got seven, because again, I don't use Autodio, I, I only set this up um, yesterday, just so I could have some data to try and run this through. But I might start, I'm gonna start using it now, because I quite like what I've built here. And then I get all of this information from the speeches. So you'll get, for example, the title of the meeting you had, the summary, you'll have um, any photos that are attached to it. Uh, so the images are somewhere here as well. So yeah, images, so, so it takes photos periodically throughout the call. So I've got those images here if I wanna use them. I've got word clouds of popular words we use, for example, like we use the word niche and niche and niches. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other information you might find interesting as well. Uh, I have the speech outlines. So this is like um, uh, basically, you know, like a mini outline and then the segments of the reasons why it's an outline. So that's quite cool. Basically, imagine you have a whole transcript as one thing and then it will break it up into like four outlines. And then within those four outlines, there might be three mini bullet points to elucidate more on those outlines. So I get all of them here. I get the speech metadata as well, process status, speech settings. 
shared emails, link share. Um, I've got a chat status here. And um, oops, what happened here? I zoomed way too far in. Sorry about that. I hope I didn't show my password. Uh, but either way, I've got a whole bunch of information now. So I've got my 10 or seven or however many meetings. So the next step is to put them through an iterator just to separate them out. And then the next stage is a filter. So if you make a meeting and one second later this automation runs, you know, the AI, author.ai hasn't had enough time to actually process that information. So what I have here is one condition to say, first off, the process status needs to be finished. And then we have here an end time. So I don't want to run stuff from like weeks ago. I want basically what I want to do here, instead of every 15 minutes, I want to run this, for example, just once every day, okay? And then what I would do is here, I would format the dates and then I would add another one here. So this is just, this is for testing. I just want to see if it worked, but to get the exact testing, to get the exact date done right, I'd have an end time and I'd say the date time operates is later than or equal to. And then because they use Unix, I have format add days now minus two X. So this will be like no later than three days in the past. And then I would change as well here, one to be like, um, uh, instead of end time, it would be, uh, yeah, end time again. So basically the end time was, uh, sorry, I would say any, any meetings that happened yesterday. So this would look at basically anything from one day ago within that 24 hour period. And then also as well, speech outlined. This is from my testing speech outline array operators greater than zero. What this means is that summary because I'm really interested in the summary and I made a bunch of fake meetings with myself where there is no summary because it was just like, for example, you see here, it was just test, blah, test, interest, production. It was like a five, 12 second meeting. So there is no summary. It's pointless. There is the fake ones and the real ones I had that were longer and you get those summaries. It's actually useful. So that's why I put an array operator in here, speech outline. There must be a summary because otherwise this is all completely pointless to me. Right after it goes through that, so I've got um, I've got my meetings from the day before or yesterday or the day before that or whatever for that 24 hour period. Then two things are going to happen. The first one is another API endpoint I found. This is called uh, I'm calling this get action items. So basically, if I come back into otter.ai here, after every call, all right. I think there's probably anything here. You might get you get action items added automatically. So it might be something like call Jeff or whatever. So for each of these calls, it's looking through to see if there's any like auto tasks and it tries to create them for you. Obviously there's none here because this is a fake call I have with myself, 40 seconds long. But for real calls, you do get real action items. So what I've done, I map it to the OTID. So this is the Otter meeting ID. And I say basically get all of the tasks related to the Otter ID that pass through this filter. Again, I have my username and password at the bottom. All right, this filter, it finds those tasks and then I send them to Google task. All right, so I use a tool called Reclaim. And basically what I do is I say, here's the title, here's the tasks, this is the title and the text. And then Reclaim, you know, uh, I don't have an affiliate link. Maybe I should find one before I put it on. Um, what Reclaim will do is essentially when I send it tasks, it will automatically assign it a time in my calendar. So I don't really have to do anything else once it's in that task list from Reclaim. It'll just be like, all right, do this task on Tuesday at 9 a.m., this task on Thursday or whatever, and then I can just go in, drag and drop them around. It's very useful to me. Um, so basically, this is one particular use case I found for this uh, Otter API autom automation. It's just grabbing all of your meetings, grab the task list, add them to a task. Again, you don't have to use Google Tasks. You could use ClickUp. You could use whatever task manager you want. But the idea is anytime you have a meeting, straight away, as soon as it processes the task list, it goes into your calendar or where you keep your tasks. So that's number That's number one. Number two was to basically get the summaries of this information, add them to a Google Doc, because I also have, I have other automations basically when I want to create a proposal for someone, for example, because all of my notes are in that one Google Doc for a client, it just takes the information, makes a proposal. So having summaries of every call in there, pretty useful. So another API endpoint I found is uh, basically I'm calling it get meeting details. So similar to the getting the list, I make a call to this address with my user ID and the OT ID, so the meeting ID, and then obviously I put my username and password at the bottom. I'm gonna run this quickly now to show you what happens here with these, oops, move my head out of the way, with these two um, branches before we get any further. So here, it's found some tasks, speaker one to spend speaker two, research videos on TikTok, speaker two to download TikTok, whatever. It adds into my Google tasks and then it will all pop into my calendar automatically. Let's move my head to get the password out of the way. It's giving me the full details now on this particular meeting and there is a full transcript in here somewhere. I can't find it. Here we go, transcripts. 
Although it's, a, it's um, arranged very, ugh, it's like person one is one bundle, person two, and then the next person speaks and the next person speaks. So it gets quite long, quite confusing. I don't really care. It's there if you want to use it. Um, but either way, I get the information. Now, the big problem here is that it doesn't actually tell you who was in that call with you. So obviously it has me because I own it. It'll say Georgia Upfish was there. But the person I was talking to is not there which makes it pretty hard for me to track. You know, if I want to do this all automatically, my ideal scenario is it finds the meeting, finds the person in my CRM, updates their document, good, good, good. But we have a problem. It doesn't tell me anything useful, although it does tell me a title and it tells me a start date and it tells me an end date for the meeting. So the next stage here is Google Calendar which you will need to work on because I'm just doing this lazily. Because again, like I said, I didn't start this from a business point use case. I started this from just what, what, what can Otter do? Um, so what I've done here is basically I run a query against the title of the meeting. And then what you could do is you can make this more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? More in depth. In addition to the title, you could bring in like a Boolean function, whatever to say title. And also this is the start date. This is the end date. Give me the result. And then it will find that meeting that matches the title. So your two titles in Otter. The title in Otter is the title of your meeting. But imagine you have a recurring meeting. So it's the same title every day, like checkup. Then there's going to be like 20 results. And you won't know which checkup is the right checkup. Although in this case, it's a recurring meeting, so it doesn't matter. But if you had five meetings with five different people that had the same thing, like um, course update or school inquiry, you don't know which one is which. But... You put in the function to say start date and end date of the meeting is the same as in Google Calendar, then it will find the right one. So that is something I've not bothered to do, and you really should do it if you want to use it. But essentially what's going to happen once you have that, it will find the right Google um, Calendar alert. And then in Google Calendar, you do get the email address of the person you're talking to. So the next stage is an iterator that runs through the attendees. So here's an example here. I've got the attendees somewhere. One of these, yeah, attendees. And then the problem here is that it'll give you the attendee of yourself and the person who you are talking to. So the next stage is a little filter here basically to say where it is not the organizer because the organizer is me and uh, the email operator exists. Now, it might be the case that you do meetings that other people host and you still use your Otter AI. So what you would do is here, you'd come in here, take out the organizer text operator is not equal to, just get rid of that. And instead you would say, and email does not equal your email address. So I've left this kind of blank because I use like four or five different emails. I could just add an or rule in here. But yeah, as I'm saying, an alternative to this would be you would add in a rule to say where email here is not equal to, and then put in your email address, george at upfish.co, or in this case, this is my Gmail. So it'd be like george.a.woodworth gmail.com or whatever and then the same thing will happen it doesn't matter it's however you want to do it but the idea here is in the iterator to separate your email address because you don't care about you with the person who you are talking to who you do care about so once it's gone through that filter it comes to our air table so this is just you know a normal air table crm what i'm doing is i'm searching opportunities because anybody i talk to is automatically an opportunity for me it's not someone who's a lead i need to you know, devolve further. It's an opportunity. It's someone who is good. So what I do is I have a formula where I search the email is the same as the email from Google Calendar. And then two things will happen. Either the email does not exist. It's a brand new person who's managed to find a meeting list and they've made a meeting with me and all of my other all of my other automations that track new calendar appointments and new meetings to create opportunities, they've all failed. And for some reason this person's got through the they've got through the cracks. Doesn't matter. We have a condition here whereby if that person does not exist, what it'll do is it will create a Google document. So it takes their email address, uh, gives it a name, meeting notes, a little bit of content, creates an opportunity for me in Airtable for that person, and then iterates out the speech outline followed by the segments, okay? And then uploads it all into a Google doc. So here I have insert paragraph. I map it to the original create document, and it will just depend the text. It will just add all of those um, segments. So even if I'm, you know, if I forget to take notes, I will have this really detailed outline of what we talked about in my meeting notes whenever I look at it. But more often than not, 99% of the time they will exist. So here we have a filter that says bundle order position exists. All right? After that, it comes to another router because again, two things will happen. One, my meeting notes exist or they don't exist. Again, I have pretty robust automations to make sure every time someone is created, every time I have a call, Google Doc is in front of me so I can take notes. 
Um, so more often than not, the meeting notes exist. We have a text parser, so I might keep my meeting notes in a URL file, so I can just click on the link anytime I want to access it. Um, so what it will do is it will take that URL and it will find the uh, document ID. And again, we iterate the speech outline. So the speech outline, if I scroll all the way down, I don't know, I'll just type it in here. So again, in case you forgot what the speech outline is, the speech outline is the basically the the, the summary of the whole conversation. So I have like four of these texts of a high powered thing. And then there'd be like three of these mini texts of like explaining it. So what I do is I break down the speech outline, then the segment. So one iterator followed by another iterator for the segments. And then I insert each segment as a paragraph into my meeting notes. And then again, provided they are in the CRM, but there is no meeting notes, same as the plants below it, create the doc, iterate, iterate, add the Google docs. So uh, if I run this all at once to see what happens, we see here, it's found that one meeting that passes through my filter and I've set that up because the process is finished. Uh, there is a speech outline, so it was a real meeting and there was a certain end date that it needed to be within, so nothing too old. It's created a bunch of Google tasks for me. So for example here, one of my tasks is to um, continue communicating through email or LinkedIn to move the thingy forward, but there was a bunch of other more meaningful tasks. This one here has grabbed all the meeting details. It searched my calendar events to see if anything matches this particular, um, this particular, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This particular event, all right? It's gone through the iterator. It, one of them um, for the organizer is not being me. Okay, it exists. In this case, I made a fake one. So it was searching for George at upfish.com. This was a fake meeting I made with a different email address I had. So it's gone through the attendees. It said, all right, George at upfish.com is the person you had the meeting with. Uh, it searched the records. They said that person does exist. And it said, oh, he does have a meeting notes. They exist. It's found the meeting ID. It's got all of the uh, fake meeting information. That, well, I say fake, it's still interesting. I, I had a really interesting conversation with myself. Um, and then it's got all of those little mini attachments, then it's uploaded it to a Google Doc. So then if I check out this Google Doc, <clears throat> so now when I open up that document, all right, so imagine again, this is a real call. I would have lots of actual manual notes here. And then what it's done is it's, uh, it's put in basically a summary of like speaker one discusses the speaker two. So now I have this, which I could read if I want to, I probably won't. Main thing is though, that when I now in the future put this through to, um, to my, to my assistant, my GPT assistant, in addition to my manual notes, it has basically this summary of a transcript. So if there's anything I've missed or forgotten about, it will find it there. So if it's say make a proposal and in one of the calls, I said something like, um, you know, pay 70% upfront or whatever. And I forgot to put that in my actual notes. It will go through the transcript, find it, add it into the proposal for me before I send it off. I can check it. It's all good. So this is a summary of this automation, um, in, like another way of summarizing it. Uh, the only three interesting things I found here for uh, author.ai, it is possible to somewhat automate the process. I would suggest using this one, getting a list of all of, the, of all of the meetings you have, getting action items for all of the meetings you have, and grabbing the transcript and the summary for all of the meetings that you have. And then from there, it's really up to you what you do with it. I suggest creating tasks and I suggest adding them to your meeting docs. So you have extra information there. Uh, but it's really, really up to you. So I really hope you like the video um, for some gratuitous self-promotion. I'm putting this up on my school page so you can download the full JSON um, and uh, use it to your heart's content. And I'll also have a much more in-depth guide there uh, as I normally do on how to actually grab all the API information from the author.ai website. So uh, please like, subscribe, engage, tell your friends, tell your family. And um, yeah, until next time, thank you.